Hi, I'm Charlotte. This is Bookish Mama Blooms. Um, I'm going to dig up a couple of potatoes before I... Oh, that is bad lighting. None of it's good, actually. Um, I'm going to dig up some potatoes before I start talking about serious book stuff. So I just thought I'd show you. They're my first potatoes of the year, so I'm quite excited. So first thing I've got to do is I've got to find a fork. And we're, we're the sort of gardeners where we just leave whatever it is that we were using, wherever it is that we were using it, <laughs> which is really helpful. So I'll be back once I've found it. What are you doing? Have you found something down there? We'll leave it be, is it? Don't you stab any. Whoa. Look at that. Is that fork through one of them? Yeah. Devastated. Look at that. Mm. I grew them. Yes, I did. You just dug them up. I'm Charlotte and this is Bookish Mama Blooms. I hope you enjoyed the potatoes. They were amazing. We cooked them with some mint from the garden, super swish. And then I did eat some of mine a little bit hot, but then I snuck in later and ate some ones that were cold in the pan. They were just so delicious. Um, it's basically too hot to eat anything at the minute and me and Stephen are sort of living off coffee, biscuits, and a lot of water. Um, it's about 26 degrees it's gonna to be today, which in the UK, I know that's nothing <laughs> compared to some places in the world, but in the UK, that's that's pretty damn hot. And um, in the UK as well, we don't typically have air conditioning in our homes. I know that if you're in a hotter place or you're expecting a good season of hot weather, you would have, but in the UK, we make do with, with maybe one fan that blows warm air around the place. <laughs> So that's what we've got at the minute. Um, yeah, it is, and, and inside it's much hotter. Uh, we have an attic that I don't even think anyone could survive in right now. And I feel like it's just, even though heat rises, I feel like it's just this duvet over the house because it is, it is boiling. It's been over 30 in the night. So yeah, not the sort of weather where you want to cook and not really the sort of weather where you want to eat, you just want to sort of lounge around. So I have done a little bit of reading. I, I filmed this video yesterday and I kind of felt I'm really, really going through a bad spell of reading. I'm going through a slump. I'm not enjoying anything. I'm partly wondering like, is that because I'm going through a slump or have I just not found, you know, if I just had a bad string of books, not as in the books are bad, but they're just not me books. And then I think to myself, do I want to give like a, a review video where everything is kind of like, pfft, do you want to watch that is the other question. So I'm going to, the one that sort of was the best of the bunch was Mixed Other by Natalie Morris. And I think Natalie Morris is awesome. And I think what she's got to say is awesome. Um, this is about multiraciality in modern Britain. Um, I found the early chapter really, really interesting, especially when she's sort of talking about the difference between race and ethnicity and where she's sort of differentiating how it fits in a British context, which was super interesting because those are the books that we've all been reading late lately are often set in an American context. Um, so I'm not, I think, for me, the reason why maybe this didn't quite work was... I felt that it was very much an introduction, which of course makes sense because she's a young writer, she's talking to a young audience that maybe haven't, you know, read anything on this subject before. She's also taking it from the place of nobody tends to write a whole book on mixed identity. So she is starting from the start, so to speak. Um, and it and it was it was super easy to read. It's really accessible, you know. I think you could definitely pass this to pretty much anybody and they'd they'd be fine with it whereas sometimes 
other things get a little bit more complicated they use more that very annoying academic language which is like there as a barrier to you to actually understand anything and this doesn't do that so I feel like I could understand why this has been so popular on like Goodreads where it's got four stars but maybe because I've read other stuff without sounding like I know everything because I certainly don't it just didn't there weren't times where I was like wanting to underline things or whatever if you see what I mean um yeah still good but again maybe because I wasn't in the right place I don't know the other two, this is what I'm sort of hesitant to talk about, just because um, I'm not so hesitant to talk about this. I'll go with this one, The Pisces, Melissa Broder. Um, this, I felt like this was really loved. And then I looked on Goodreads and actually it, it only has three stars overall. So maybe it's a Marmite book and some people like five stars it and then some people two stars it, I'm not sure. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I flew through it. I think I read it in about two days in total. Um, but for me, I didn't really understand what the overall message was. Um, it's about addiction. And I can understand that it's about the fact that even when you think you aren't hurting anybody, when you're uh, addicted to something, you often are. There's always going to be somebody sort of um, caught up in your life that is hurt by your actions. So I understood that bit. I don't know if I necessarily needed the plot with the dog to go the way it did there's a dog in this and it's a lovely dog called Dominic and I just for me um it happens quite early on that initially she loves the dog and then she starts to mistreat it neglect it more than anything else she doesn't do anything really um deliberately hurtful but she starts to neglect it and I lost my sympathy with her when she did that maybe I'm supposed to I think it's always dangerous though when it's a first person narrative or when the third person narrator focuses heavily on just one person's thoughts if that person becomes unlikable I think it's a huge gamble to keep the reader interested if they don't think that the lead character is worthy of that interest um, but I have to say the character of Lucy I massively over related to her for the first half of the book in the sense of her thoughts about life and death and her seeing the world through literature, um, she's doing a PhD that she can't finish, and aside from the fact that she's addicted to, in her instance, she's addicted to love and sex, but I feel like it's mostly love for her. Um, I, I've never been addicted to anything. I don't think I've, oh, ow, did you hear that? That's my shoulder. Um, I don't think I've ever been addicted to anything. That is not because I'm super strong, it's just, I just don't have that sort of personality so I'm quite lucky really um I would definitely have you know maybe been as bonkers as she is if I <laughs> it's bad enough without an addiction so yeah I couldn't relate to that aspect of it and but my sympathy was with her initially because I felt like we shared a lot of other personality traits and then the dog thing kind of ruined it and then I also wasn't sure what the merman meant so I would love to talk about this in the comments. There's there's a way of being too spoilery about it because it is a bit of a plot. Well, it's a very plotty book. So I can't say much more than that without giving stuff away to those of you that haven't read it. So I, I'm not so fussed about saying I don't really connect to that because I, um, I feel like that also did very, very well. So nothing I say is going to make much of a difference to how successful that book was. But this is a book that I feel really, really sort of genuinely nervous to say anything negative about Detransition Baby by Tori Peters and the reason I say nervous is one because I feel like I've seen just tons of people love it um and so I kind of like what happened with me and I read it with um Sean for story time and she loved it too so I felt when I was reading it I was like come on what you know what's going on why why can't you connect and um and also because this is written by a trans author and it's all you know pretty much all the main characters, well not the, all of the main characters but the two main characters are trans I I always have a worry if the either the author or the subject matter are outside of my field of experience I always have a worry that the reason I haven't connected to a book is because of this underlying maybe not prejudice but an underlying feeling of well I don't get this so I just don't like it and I don't think I am that kind of reader because I'm looking up at my shelves now which are on the other side of you and there are books from all manner of life and backgrounds that I have really loved but there is a worry and I think that's good 
to think to yourself, okay, am I not connecting to this because I have ex expectations of what these characters should be behaving like? I think it's good to ask that. Um, and I don't know where I stand with this. I would love to know if you've read it and you weren't sure either. I think also because it's it um, revolves around trans identity, trans parenting, um, trans experience, all things which I don't have any personal experience of and I'm wholly relying on Tory Peters to relate to me, um, I'm nervous to say anything negative about any of the characters in the book because... Uh, one of the main reasons is because I know that the TERFs will be out in full force about some of the topics in this book. And by TERFs I mean trans-exclusionary radical feminists. And I don't ever want to side on their side. <laughs> I don't want to even be one iota um, on their side. So if I'm going to boil it down to anything, it's because the, the trans character, Reese, who is trans female, who actually I really, she was my favourite character out of the three that were the main sort of characters. Um, I loved her and I felt like she was probably the most honest and easy to like character but I found her unchallenged by the narrative views on what it is to be female quite, I think in a lot of instances people would find it enormously triggering. There, you know, when she talks about feeling feminine within a couple, um, there's often an introduction of violence from the male um, quotient of that couple. Um, be it literally physical violence, beatings, rape fantasy, um, a, f a feeling of being dainty when she's been beaten, which I was just like, and I'm not saying that those things don't happen and I'm not saying that that's not society's fault for making life for trans women so hard and being so unsupported that when they get to adulthood, if they've not been supported from an early age, that these aren't necessarily the situations that they find themselves in. And Reese makes it quite clear that the sort of cis men that will be with her are wanting to enact those fantasies on her. It's just very upsetting to read and I think maybe the length of the book, you know, it's it's not particularly long, it's only 300 pages and it's got three characters, there's dealing with an intense issue. At the very heart of it, oh dear, it's too hot for Jacqueline's, at the very heart of it there is an unborn baby and everybody's trying to decide whether the baby should be born or not be born, be parented in, you know, a mother-father scenario or be parented in a mother-mother-father scenario with the father being a trans woman within himself but choosing to identify as his cis self because of experiences that he's gone through. I, yeah, I just... I have a lot of thoughts. They'd never all fit in a video. And I, I don't... Yeah, I'd like to to talk to you. Um, but obviously if we do have this discussion in the comments, be really mindful of the fact that um, I will not tolerate any anti-trans comments and they will be deleted. I probably won't even reply. Um, this is not an issue on, on whether trans people have the right to exist and do as they please, parent, any of those things. It is merely a discussion on whether there was enough time in the book to really engage with all of the huge issues that were presented. Um, and also whether we even believe that you could just suddenly say to your partner who you just got pregnant I'd like to bring in a second mother and that that person would go okay like that was a huge stumbling block for me and that is basically the premise of the book so yeah um I just feel sad that I didn't get on with that as much and it oh you've moved have you and um yeah I, I don't know what to read next I've sort of picked up one of those books I was halfway through A Still Life which is about uh, chronic illness. And I've read, I think, another chapter, having not picked it up for months, and I was thoroughly enjoying it. So I think maybe that's the way to go. I'll finish some of the books I was halfway through. What are you reading? Are you able to read in the heat? We've just started the summer holidays, so we're on day four, I think, of the summer holidays. And, you know, it's there's just no time. Uh, there's no grown-up time. Me and Stephen managed, like, a couple of hours away down the beach when my parents came up. And, um, you know, we just literally did nothing because the silence, I mean, it wasn't silent because the beach was heaving, but just 
not having TVs or iPads or Jabber was quite nice. And you don't necessarily want to do anything when you're, you know, either washing dishes, making people food, um, you know, watching Sonic do his thing because someone's like, watch, watch, watch every second of it. So yeah, um, there has been a lot of growing up time and there won't be <laughs> for another six weeks. Let me know how you guys are handling the summer holidays because I know there's a few parents out there. Do you have a plan? How do you entertain your child? Tell me. Okay, I'm going to go now. This is probably clocking up another 18 minutes, but I will um, speak to you soon and I hope you're all well. Bye.